Hello people of the internet, this is GMA Tank and the painting with commentary video for episode 41 of Paint to Life, the Orc Captain Bust, coming from MyMiniatureFactory.com. It's going to be an interesting episode, it will be fast and brief, as I did not actually paint this myself as it was sent to me by Alex over at Frog Lane Studios as part of our Secret Santa gift. But I asked him if he could send me the footage and we would review it together just so we'd have a copy. And also, just in case you were watching during the episode and wanted to see the painting a little bit more up close, that's what this video is for. So we can see here, um, Alex is using an airbrush to put down that base coat on this orc. And now this is the first bust that I've ever seen painted I've ever had myself. It's something that uh, I'd like to give a try to once, but more importantly, that airbrush is kind of fascinating putting that base coat down so smooth and uh, with such detail. Uh, as you can see here, Alex is using uh, some Citadel paints. It looks like a Mornfang brown. Um, I don't know what the colors were for the green, but there's definitely two in there. There's a, like a yellowy one. He did almost like a Zenithal top-down spray when he was doing that spray painting. And truthfully, I'm not really sure I mean, I know I could reach out to Alex and ask for these colors if he still has a record of them, because I know he painted this like in November. But I don't think it really matters, does it, folks? I mean, you and I, we're going to paint this ourselves. We're going to pick our own colors. When I put them in for reference, it's mostly for my own sake, as well if you wanted to mirror it. But in this case, I mean, we have a pretty good line. Come, oh, look at it tipping in that. <laughs> um, we have a pretty good idea of the Citadel colors, so I definitely think that's a Mornfang brown he's putting down. And um, nice flat base for the hat and for that strap over the captain's shoulder. Um, again, it's on that peg. It looks like a toothpick or maybe it's a band of metal that he's put in there. Uh, this is a 3D painted, I'm sorry, a 3D printed miniature. The model is purchased from, um, from a website. Now, I don't know if uh, Alex printed this himself. Actually, I'm sure he didn't. I think one of his Patreons sent it to him to paint. So uh, kind of fun how this model has made the rounds in the YouTube painting community from being sent in to painted and then, then story told by another YouTuber. So I hope if you're listening and you were the one that supplied it to Frog Lane, I hope you're happy with what he did and how I gave it the story for uh, my episodes. So he's putting down some purple in that beard. That first base color is kind of blue off screen there, but then there's that purple. Um, can't make out the label. But um, I did notice in the finished product there were some multiple shades of blue in there. He has a lot of layering and build up. It almost looks like he's painting right out of the pots without thinning the paint down. I've never actually watched someone paint and comment on it. It's almost like I'm babysitting someone else's kid and then telling you all about how they were at the end and my opinion about how you're raising them. <laughs> all I know is Alex has been painting for about 20 years, so he knows what he's doing. And the finished product definitely says that. Um, lots of layering building up. Oh, he does have that wet palette over there on the left So maybe he has thinned it down. It's just giant left hand is blocking the view of the wet palette So I don't know If this episode is going to be so much of a learning thing for you since I can't speak firsthand, but maybe um, If you're listening you could comment below. Have you ever painted a bust before and what do you think of them? Do you uh, do you like painting busts or do you prefer full-on figures? For a 3D printed model, it was pretty clean. Obviously, it was done with a resin. Uh, I think it was an Elegoo Mars II. Um, but again, very sharp. Sharp lines, no details. There was a couple little specks of um, uh, brush fur, but I mean, there was no, there was nothing. It was pretty solid, I must say. 3D printing has come a long way. Uh, so is that Citadel color, something purple. I'm actually leaning forward to try and make it out. Uh, it looks like Grey Seer now has come out. When you're going to print paint a bust, I would imagine, the details that go into it are so much more important than the mass-produced painting we typically do here on Paint to Life with the Nolzers. You know, where are the details? There's some details, but a lot of this fine stuff is just not taken into consideration. I mean, look at this mate's gone at this beard now for a better part of, I don't know, three minutes of, oh, there's some shade, Drucci purple he's putting on that now. This guy's been painting this for almost three minutes of time-lapse footage, so I can only imagine how much time he spent on it. This looks like five speed, so 
better part of an hour at least. A little more brown. So yeah, have you painted? No, he's working on the teeth. Cool. Some tiny brushes. Now I'm not good enough of a painter yet to have very nice brushes. My brushes are all hodgepodge. I mean, I have, it's not that I chintz out on them, but I just, I sort of wreck them. I use my cleaners and things, but I find that my small detail brush, like the one he's using here, just aren't that great. Uh, I don't know if I'd be able to do this with my equipment as it currently stays. Looks like it's almost a yellow or a gold. Maybe like an uh, Averland sunset, maybe with a little bit of white. He's, I know he's gonna base the teeth yellow and then build them up with a little bit of white or a bone color. I'll tell you also that Alex, I, from what he told me, he was very happy when this was done with what he had done and he was almost, considering keeping it and buying another one and then <laughs> sending me the other but I'm glad he didn't because now I have uh, uh, this orc as part of my shelf looking down over the rest of our minis and that's something to aspire to and I've only been painting since uh, May of 2019 so just over a year and a half and uh, when I find, you know see something like this I'll speak to this I mean, there are times when you see other people's work and you think, oh my God, I could never even come close to something that precise or, or that fine. And, and it kind of takes the jam out of your donut. It just makes you want to say, ah, balls this, I'm never going to get that good. But that's not the thing. I mean, I assure you if Alex was here and this was some kind of interactive podcast. Oh, I've seen that metal before, by the way, that chrome paint he's using. It's like a super, super, super chrome in that little metal vial. I have to find out where you got that from. But anyways, as I was saying, you're always going to find someone whose painting is better than yours. And if Alex was here right now talking, I'm sure he'd list off five other people who he think put his to shame. And that's just the way it works. And that's the way with anything. You know, go do some sports, go play some hockey, go play some baseball. And, you know, maybe you're the best in your team, but you know when you go to nationals, someone's going to whoop your ass and you're going to become, uh, you know, and the same with mini painting. You might be a noob compared to some of these greats, but to some people in your hometown, you're award-winning. So just try not to let that dampen your spirit because it will. And then you'll, you'll, that looks like a flesh. Is that a violet or uh Way to go, Alex, turn all those pots so we can't read the labels, gosh. Warpstone green, maybe. Doing some of the highlights on the orc's face. So anyways, as I was saying, you know, you're going to do stuff and you're going to look amazing and then you'll compare it to someone else and it'll look like trash. And that's just the way it is with everything in life. So never feel bad and never let the never let looking at other people's work taint the hobby for you. I've always maintained that even if you take even if you take your 10 year old and have her paint something for you, it'll look better than the default gray plastic that came out of the out of the plastic. You know what I mean? It'll, it'll look better than the gray pre-primed or primed base model that came with the game or that came out of the, the miniature package. Painting something just even in any modicum of skill will make it more appeasing to use and play with. And I truly believe that. So people should not get under their own skin. I'm speaking to myself here. Because I do that sometimes. I'll see someone post, oh, here's here's just a little something I threw together in 15 minutes. And you look at it, you're like, I hate you. Use those to inspire you, not to drag you into the mud. Interesting how he did that airbrushing, and now he's pretty much repainted the whole thing with a couple different color greens. And I noticed that, the, like the layering, see those stripes? It almost makes the muscles look more fibrous because there's no real definition on those muscles other than what he's painted on there. You know, there's a couple of those hills and valleys, your typical highlighting where he's painting on top, but because he used so many paints and he's making these straight brush strokes, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. When you see the finished product, you can look at those and actually see, looks like muscles, fibers through the skin, even though it's a flat surface. Very cool. Does that a bit with the hat. He must do that coming up. He hasn't touched it yet. It's still all Mornfang Brown. And you know, if you have a, a limited variety of paints to paint with, you always have a black and a white. You can make your own mixes, you can make your own shadows and your own shades. 
you know you want to go a little lighter and just put a couple drops that's why i'd suggest even though i like my citadel line i have a couple of paints the white paints that are in dropper bottles just so that i can quickly add a little bit of white to it without having to mix match with the brush and such like in, in mess a brush so Oh, the eyes. Everyone hates the eyes. It's the hardest part. You make mistakes. You have to go back over it. But I mean, I saw someone do something neat one time. Uh, you might have seen this, and I might have even mentioned it before in one of my videos. But uh, here's a picture of a baseball team, let's say, from 15 feet away. And the guy said, tell me, what, what, look at their eyes. Tell me that you see the whites of their eyes. And the truth is, you, you can't. In reality, if you're more than five feet away from someone, their eyes just look like fleshy sinkholes with shadows, right? People are so worried about putting white and then the color of the iris and the pupil, but really at any type of distance, oh, here it goes on the hat with some shade. Ooh, that's not shade. I lied, that's like a, a darker brown. Hmm. Interesting. But anyways, like I was saying, so the eyes, at any kind of distance, you can't see the whites of the eyes anyways. So typically when I do eyes, I usually just use like a shade, an Agrax Earth shade or a Reekland flesh shade and just let the flesh, the shade pool and it turns into a dark sunken hole. And um, that's probably good enough. A little dry brush there on that hat. He didn't do much dry brushing at all on this model, just on the hat. The uh, flesh and the hat and the, the bandolier. Anyways, Alex, that's all for this, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, Alex. Thank you again for sending them off. Merry Christmas to all of you. Hope you had a great holiday. And um, leave comments and questions down below. I'll throw up some finished pictures of the finished bust here so we can uh, take a look at it. And uh, that's that. As always, you can reach me at painttolife at gmail.com or in the comments below if you have any questions or any requests, anything you want me to work on in particular. I would be glad to review that. I will say this since we have a little bit of time while I run these pictures. I'm going to be traveling in January for work and I'm still going to do an episode. I'm going to review one of the beginner painting kits from Army Painter that comes from the Dungeons and Dragons Nozzle's Marvelous Pigments. Uh, I'll make an episode just using that on the road. So that'll be fun. And there you go. If, if anyone's listening to this, you got a little sneak peek of what's coming up in January on Paint to Life. Thanks, everybody. This is GMA Tank signing off. Remember, everyone, wash your hands.